Hey everyone, today we are at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to check out Harry Potter the Exhibition. This is a really cool exhibit. It just opened in mid-February and it has all different types of props and artifacts from the movie, some costumes, and other than that, I don't really know what to expect about this other than the fact that we're gonna see some props and some costumes from the movies, but I'm really excited to check it out. I know, me too. If you haven't seen our video, we'll link it down below of when we went to the Harry Potter store in New York, which was really, really cool. So I'm excited to see how this is like different. I know this isn't a store, it's like an exhibit, but I know that they have like kind of similar things, like things from the movies, costumes, wands, all things like that. But yeah, like Matt said, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm really excited to see what they have. Let's go see what's going on at the Harry Potter exhibition. So we just checked in and we scanned our tickets and got our wristbands over here. And now we are making our way into the exhibition, which is right this way. I can see King's Cross Station. So we're just making our way inside now. It says, welcome to Hogwarts. And they got some clips from the movies playing over here on these screens. One of the first artifacts we see over here is the first edition of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, published in 1998. I remember getting this book when it came out. I wish I still had the first edition one, because these are worth a lot of money now. So the first room that we walked into is themed to the Marauder's Map. And if you scan a little wristband that they give you in the beginning where you fill out your information, your name shows up on the map. I'm over there. Oh, there's Alex's all the way, all the way up top over there. <laughs> That's so cool. And the first room that already has that interactive element, which is really cool. And we didn't film the beginning where we filled all the information out for the wristband, but it was just your name, you know, zip code, all that stuff. And everyone who tapped their bands in this room, their name is showing up on the map. Check out the carpet too. Even the carpet is themed in this room. It really feels like you stepped right into the Marauders map. The scenes are changing in the room. Looks like it's snowing over at Hogwarts. Uh -oh. The Dementors. Watch out. Watch out. Wow, this is awesome. They have all the portraits over here in this next hallway. Wow, this is so cool. This kind of reminds me of Universal. You know, when you're in the queue for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Check out some of these portraits. He's taking a nap. And right at the end of the hallway is the fat lady. If we go right through this portrait, we can go into the Gryffindor common room. So there's a little peephole here where you can look in and you can see all the characters in there. That's pretty cool. It's like you're like sneaking and like looking in on them. Welcome to Hogwarts. Ooh, there's Alex's house. A Slytherin. Take a picture. Proud Slytherin. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting. Should we take a picture? Yeah. Let's see what happens. So we are now in Hogwarts, and it looks like there's a room for each of the houses. They have a house, a room over here for Gryffindor, there's Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and then right next to me over here is Slytherin, and then they have all these interactive screens like we just showed you what Alex was doing. You tap your wristband that you got in the beginning, and then you can take a picture here in the room. And in this room they have the sorting hat where you can come and get your picture taken and it looks like the hat is on your head. It's gonna make our way into the Gryffindor section over here. Let's see what's inside. And one of the coolest things about this exhibition is the props. And one of the first props we see over here is the Sword of Gryffindor from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That is so cool. It's, it's literally right here. I wish I can hold it. That is so cool. Also in the Gryffindor room are the robes from Ron, Hermione, and Harry, all from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This is Harry Potter's Gryffindor robe right here. That is so cool. Look at Hermione's. And then Ron's over there with the sweater. So all the rooms connect. It just goes in one big giant circle around and we're over here in Hufflepuff now. And they have some more costumes from some of the movies. This is from 
Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is just from a, a random Hufflepuff student, so this is going to be an extra from the film. And then over here you have Tonks' costume from the Half-Blood Prince. Wow. Check it out. Very, very cool. And then over here is Cedric Diggory's costume from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Cedric Diggory, or is that Batman? <laughs> <laughs> Who is he now? Is he Edward? Batman, is yeah. he Ed Edward, right, from Twilight? Yeah, Edward. Edward, he's Batman, and now he's also Cedric Diggory. Over here they have a couple of wands. They have Tonk's wand over there on the right, and then the wand on the left is Cedric Diggory's wand. And Cedric's is from Goblet of Fire, and then Tonks' wand is from Order of the Phoenix. Making our way to the next house. This next room is Ravenclaw over here. And it looks like each of these rooms has costumes in it, which is pretty neat. Let's see, do we, let's see who we have over here. I think that one in the pink is going to be Luna Lovegood. Is it? Yeah. Shout out Kelly. That's your favorite character. <laughs> and this costume right here is Cho Chang's costume from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. That is really cool. It's so cool to see all these costumes like right in front of you, right behind the glass. It's really neat. And then over here is Luna Lovegood. Here's a closer look at Luna's costume. Luna's always been one of my favorite characters. She's so unique and so quirky. And you can see in the photo, she's holding the quibbler and she has the glasses on, like she so famously does in the movie. And there is the quibbler and the spectrospex. That is so cool. Now this is awesome. They have Bellatrix Lestrange wand from Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. It says the handle of Bellatrix Lestrange's wand, roughly inscribed with runic symbols, has a claw-like curve resembling birds of prey. And then they also have Bellatrix's costume right here. Holy cow. That is really cool. This might be like the coolest costume we've seen so far, just based on like the detail and all like the craftsmanship that went into it. And then of course Bellatrix has such an iconic costume too. That is really awesome. And then over here is Draco Malfoy. And this is also from Order of the Phoenix. Very, very cool. Draco looking very sharp with this outfit. And in addition to his costume, they also have his wand from Order of the Phoenix. And his wand says, Draco Malfoy's blunt tip wand shaft was crafted out of light brown Mexican rosewood that flows into a jet black ebony handle. So the next room we're heading into is gonna be the Great Hall. And that quote from Professor McGonagall is welcoming us in. And here is Minerva McGonagall's costume. It's from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. That is really, really neat. Oh wow, check this out. They have all the floating candles over here. And then they have a few tables and a screen to make it look like the room is bigger than it is. But yeah, we're in the Great Hall. That's really cool. The candles are awesome. That is really cool. Let's take a walk around and see what else we can see over here. See some of the details of Hogwarts and the Great Hall over here. Really awesome, and then we're standing directly underneath the candles right now. You can see they have a couple little tables set up as if it was dining time in the Great Hall, and the scene just changed, and it's Christmas. The candles are so cool. I know. They look, really look like they're floating. Yeah. It's really cool. And did you know, in the at least in the first and second Harry Potter, they were actually real candles hanging from the ceiling. Oh, wow. Yeah, Christopher Columbus had actual real candles just like this hanging from the ceiling, so... If you watch the first Harry Potter movie and you think it's CGI, it's actually not. They are real candles. Now, I don't know about the later movies, but at least in the beginning, they were real. As you exit the Great Hall, the next room that you enter is entitled Wands. And I could already see there's a whole bunch of display cases around here with some of the iconic wands from the film. And it's pretty neatly decorated as well. It looks like we're in Ollivanders with all the wands up there on the shelves. It's pretty cool. It says this exhibition features the nine wands that make the Wizarding World logo. And there he is, Newt Scamander. And you can see Newt Scamander's wand right down here. It's a little hard to see with some of the smudges on the glass, but this is Newt Scamander's on-screen wand from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Also from Fantastic Beasts, they have Gellert Grindelwald's wand, who always had a really unique wand. I liked how his was just very basic, but you can tell it's twisted, you know, just like he is. Really interested to see the direction they go with Grindelwald in the new movie, now that Johnny Depp 
isn't in it. But then something else I just noticed is they have these giant wands in here as well, like I guess for photo ops and whatnot. Check out this huge elder wand. That is so cool. And here he is, the man himself, one of the greatest wizards, Albus Dumbledore. And there it is. There's the Elder One right there. This is from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, screen used. Really, really cool to see. Now, you're a Slytherin, so yeah, are, you in, are you in support of Voldemort? I or? don't associate myself with him. <laughs> you're with the good Slytherins, yes. like Snape. Yes. <laughs> but over here is Lord Voldemort's wand. Very cool. This one is from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire as well. And of course, it wouldn't be the Harry Potter exhibition without Harry Potter's wand. And there it is. From Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. There is Harry's screen use wand. They also have Ron Weasley's wand as well. This is also from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So they have another interactive element in here. Where you tap your little band. It says, welcome Alex. The Elder Wand. Is that your wand? Yeah, I picked Dumbledore. Oh, wow. Okay, cast a spell. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Ten points to Slytherin. Hmm. Next up, we are in the potions classroom. It says, in potions class, students learn how to brew elixirs and tonics taught by potions master Severus Snape for Harry's first five years, and then Horace Slughorn. And then right over there, you can see the costumes of Snape and Slughorn. We'll get a closer look in just a second. But right when you enter the room, they have an interactive element over here. And you can see all the little potion vials. So Alex is gonna tap her band. And let's see. Select a potion to brew. Hmm. Which one hmm. should I do? Uh, maybe Polyjuice Potion. That's a good one. Look around on the table to find clues for the ingredients. Select the correct ingredient. Uh, leeches. Oh, oh look, and it lights up. Oh, here it comes. Did, did it brew? Oh, wow. You successfully brewed it, and those are the ingredients for Polyjuice Potion. That's cool that it lights up when you click the right ones. So they actually have one of Alan Rickman's Snape costumes from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Holy moly. This is so intimidating, like even without Snape here, you know, just seeing the robes. Countless times I've seen these robes walk through the hallways of Hogwarts. Those big, big robes flapping in the wind. That's really, really cool to see. And then behind them, there's some smaller details over here. You got some more potions and ingredients that are brewing. You got some potion making books. And then this costume over here is Horace Slughorn's. Here is a closer look at Horace Slughorn's costume. And this is from the Half-Blood Prince as well. Really, really cool. He had some nice style. Definitely like the vest and the bow ties, looking sharp. And these are also some props in the movies as well. The advanced potion making book. It's from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, as is the Liquid Luck Vial. So, hidden in some of the details behind some of the costumes, you can find some more screen use props. So after you exit potions, the next room that you enter is Defense Against the Dark Arts. And there's another interactive element over here, but there's also, along these walls, some really cool props and costumes. Here is Gilderoy Lockhart's costume from Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Very cool, and then just over here next to it there are some props. So you have his book and his photo, also from Chamber of Secrets. And of course you can't have a defense against the dark arts classroom without Remus Lupin. And here's his costume. This one was from Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. And this is described as a typical English wizard. The next room of the exhibit is Divination. And over here, they got a couple of interactive elements, which we're gonna show you in a second, but they also have the Divination Teacup from Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. And he has the Grim. So we are now on the Hogwarts grounds, and they have all the costumes of those who competed in the Triwizard Tournament. There's Victor Crumb, Harry, Cedric Diggory, that is so cool. And then over here they have the egg, the golden egg from the Goblet of Fire. 
Of course, you remember they had to take this down underwater, open it, and then that's where they can hear it. But there's the golden egg. That's really neat. And then one of my favorite things that we've seen here today is the goblet of fire. That is so awesome. And I just have one question. Did you put your name in the goblet of fire? <laughs> I did. We showed you the costumes, but they also have the actual Tri-Wizard Cup from Goblet of Fire. That is so cool. Check out all the detail on it. That is amazing. As we make our way through the Hogwarts grounds, it looks like we're going to be entering either Hagrid's Hut. It looks like Hagrid's Hut. Yeah, we got the pumpkins down here on the floor. Check out this pumpkin scarecrow over here too. And I was right. This is Hagrid's Hut. It's really cool. There's a photo op with a giant chair. You can see all his little cages hanging from the ceiling. Some of his tools and accessories right over here by the floor. And there's his umbrella. And here is Hagrid's pink umbrella from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And of course the umbrella holds Hagrid's broken wand. There's the screen used umbrella from the film. And Hagrid has a dragon egg roasting on the fire over here. It's really cool. And then they have a photo op where you can sit in Hagrid's chair. And next up is the rules of Quidditch. This room is all about Quidditch. They got some costumes. There's a giant golden snitch over here. And then they actually have where you can throw the quaffle through the rings over there and play yourself a little Quidditch. So this is really neat. They have two little setups over here where you can grab a quaffle and play some Quidditch. That is awesome. And in addition to actually playing some Quidditch, they got some props in here as well. Here is the Nimbus 2000 from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. That is really, really awesome. And then over here, they have some Quidditch robes. This is Harry Potter's Quidditch uniform from Chamber of Secrets. To me, the Quidditch uniforms were always like my favorite. If I had to wear like one set of robes, if I was a Hogwarts student, it would definitely be the Quidditch robes. And they also have the Nimbus 2001. So here is the upgraded model of the Nimbus 2000. You can see right there on the top. A little hard to see because of the glare, but it says Nimbus 2001. And there it is. They also have a whole display dedicated to Fantastic Beasts and Newt Scamander. You can check out some of his cases over here. That's awesome. And then here's Newt Scamander's costume from Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Eddie Redmayne wore this costume in the film. Another screen used costume. I think this is another one of my favorite ones that we've seen so far they have all the proclamations on the walls over here that can mean one thing and one thing only we must not be too far from dolores umbridge's office and right next to those proclamations they have umbridge's office senior undersecretary to the minister of magic and then you can come over here and get your photo taken at her desk with all her cat paintings in the background they also have her costume from order of the phoenix as well. I feel like a lot of the costumes we've seen are from Order of the Phoenix. I wonder why. I wonder if some of the costumes from the other films are on location elsewhere, but it seems like a lot of the costumes are from Order of the Phoenix. And this is really neat. Definitely one of the more popular photo op spots is the cupboard under the stairs. You can get your photo taken in Harry Potter's bedroom. That is so cool. They have a whole room dedicated to Voldemort. It says Voldemort is so feared by the wizarding world, he is most often referred to as he who shall not be named. And then over here it says, I am Lord Voldemort. Of course, it said Tom Riddle before that, and then they jumbled the letters up, which was one of the mysteries of the movies. But that is cool. And then over here, it looks like we got some Voldemort costumes. This is from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Wow. You know, in the movies, you think he's wearing all black all the time, but these are actually kind of green. This one is from Order of the Phoenix, another Order of the Phoenix costume here. Another one that you would expect to be like pretty much all black or even darker than it is, but you can see it's got some like tans in it, some greens. 
And then this one over here is from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. So cool. These costumes are so intimidating even though there's no one inside of them. Also in this room they have all the Horcruxes. Here's the Hufflepuff Cup. Here's a Ravenclaw's Diadem. Salazar Slytherin's Locket. Barbolo Gaunt's Ring. They have the Elder Wand over here from Goblet of Fire. And then this one's pretty funny. It says, Invisibility Cloak. <laughs> and there's nothing here. And then they have Tom Riddle's Diary over here with the um, fang when, when they sta stab it. Look how cool that is. That's awesome. Iconic scene from the movie. You can see the stab wounds right there in the diary. There's the Basilisk Fang. That is so cool. From Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets. And right next to Voldemort's room, they have some more dark costumes. You got the Death Eaters over here. This is from Deathly Hallows Part 1. Check out some of the Death Eater masks. And then they have another one of Lord Voldemort's costumes. This one is from Deathly Hallows Part 2. So we saw part one in the first room, and now here is his costume from part two. They got some more costumes from the end of the series. These are all from Deathly Hallows part two. Here's Harry Potter's costume. There's Hermione Granger. That is awesome. Here's Ron Weasley, also from Deathly Hallows part two. And then here's the hero. Neville Longbottom. Against this white background over here is the costumes from that famous scene between Dumbledore and Harry Potter from Deathly Hallows Part 2. Check out Dumbledore's robes. Check out some of the like the detail work, even all the way down to the floor. It's really, really impressive. And then Harry Potter's t-shirt and jeans right there. And there is a photo of Harry wearing the costume in Deathly Hallows Part 2. And as you exit, you can see the points tally. So all those interactive elements that we showed you where you win points for your house, looks like us Gryffindors won the day. 25,000 points. And as with any attraction, you exit through the gift shop. <laughs> they have a whole bunch of house merchandise over here. So we'll walk around and we'll show you guys what they have here as you exit Harry Potter the Exhibition. This is really nice. I like this a lot. They have this Gryffindor crew neck this is $70. And they have a whole bunch of other little things. They have, you know, some lanyard holders, some scarves, some plushes, a Gryffindor pillow, a whole bunch of keychains, hats and tumblers. So we did find a couple more spirit jerseys. They have a Hogwarts one over here. And then check out the back. It says Hogwarts. This would be perfect for like a cool day over at Universal. And then they have a whole bunch of other like Hogwarts specific merchandise, some more hats some pins and keychains. Got some mugs over here. Here's a look at the Hufflepuff spirit jersey with the Hufflepuff crest over there on the front. And they do have Ravenclaw as well right over here. I believe they have Ravenclaw. Let's see. Oh yeah, back here. So there is the front of the Ravenclaw. And there's the back. Alex found some more Slytherin merchandise. That's a really awesome t-shirt. Yeah, they have it in the sweatshirt too. Yeah, that's cool. I'm not even a Slytherin, but I would definitely wear that. And if you want to get your butterbeer fix, you can do so over here in the gift shop. They sell butterbeer for $10 a bottle. Now this butterbeer tastes a little bit different than the one over at Universal. If you've been to the Harry Potter store in New York, it's the same exact butterbeer that they sell there. All right, so that is gonna do it for our time here at Harry Potter the Exhibition over at the Franklin Institute. Overall, I had a really, really good time. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, this is like a must-do thing if I can. Yeah, I agree too. I really liked that it was interactive. You can scan your wristband and do a bunch of different things like cast spells, all different stuff, but I like that they also had like original stuff from the movies, yeah. which was really, really cool to see. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the score that we went to in New York. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. If you guys are Harry Potter fans, it's definitely a must see. Yeah, I was gonna say, it did remind me a little bit of the store, and that was one of the cool things about the store is that they had props. So if you're into like movie props and seeing costumes and wands and all different artifacts from the movies, then this is something that I definitely recommend you check out. It was really, really awesome. We'll leave some information down below about pricing and if you guys want to plan your visit here to the Franklin Institute to check out the Harry Potter exhibition, it's something we definitely recommend. And if you're fans of the movie, like I said, it's worth taking the trip. We live about an hour and a half from Philly, so we drove up and it was well worth it. So if you guys enjoyed coming along with us, make sure you give the video a nice big thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. And with that being said, 
We'll see you guys real soon.